Hello everybody. Welcome once again to another interesting video on verbal ability from career ride. Our topic for today is prepositions. Another important topic when it comes to your placement tests and entrance exams. So in today's video, we are going to learn these 20 prepositions which we commonly use in our day to day lives. And I sincerely hope that whatever we learn in today's video is going to help you solve the questions correctly in your paper. Okay. So we'll see what are the correct uses of these prepositions and we'll also see what are the common mistakes that we commit while using them. Okay. So let's begin. So now before we actually start with the correct uses of prepositions, let me try to draw your attention to some of the common reasons why we commit the mistakes in use of these prepositions. Because once you are aware of the reasons why you are committing the mistakes, you can consciously try to avoid them. Okay. So the very first reason here is we try to translate the things as it is from our mother tongue into English. And this is where the first mistake comes in. Because many a times what happens is you cannot implement the thing as it is in English from your mother tongue. Okay. The next thing that happens with us is we try to use a preposition when it is actually not needed in English. Okay. And the third reason is many a times we miss out on the prepositions when they are actually needed. Don't worry. We are going to learn all of these in this series on prepositions. So we'll not do just one video. We'll do multiple videos to learn all of these things. So the first set of words that I've got for you here is at, in and on. And the first word that we are going to discuss here is at. Now, at is a preposition that we use to denote a specific point of time. Okay. So, it means that whenever we are talking about a specific time in the clock, we use the preposition at. For example, she reached home at 4 o'clock. Here, I am talking about a specific time in the clock. That is 4 o'clock. That is why I am using the preposition at. I am not talking randomly about evening, morning. I am talking about a specific point of time in the clock on a given day, right? So she reached home at 4 o'clock. Similarly, the flight departs at 16.15, which is again a specific time, right? So I've used the preposition at here. Similarly, whenever you are using any phrases that denote specific time, then also you use at. For example, at midnight, at noon, at sunrise, at sunset, with all these phrases you use at. And with night also you use at. Why? Because midnight is a specific time on a given day. Noon is a specific time. Sunrise, sunset, these are specific times when the first ray of sun is seen in the horizon. That is sunrise. At sunset, when the sun starts setting, so it is a, is a specific time. Right? That is why we use at with them. Here with night also you use at. Pay attention to this. This is extremely, extremely important. Let's see some examples again. I don't drink tea at night. I could clearly see the comet in the clear sky at sunrise. But rather than night, if it was morning, then what would happen? See these examples now. I don't drink tea in the morning. I'm not saying at the morning or at morning. I'm saying in the morning because with words like morning, evening, afternoon, you use in. Similarly, I met him outside the bank in the afternoon. I'm not talking about any specific time. I'm not saying four o'clock, five o'clock. I'm saying I met him outside the bank in the afternoon, right? And it is one of those words which comes with morning, evening, afternoon. With these words we use in, right? Pay attention to these because these type of mistakes are very, very common with all of us. And if you want to avoid them, you have to know that whenever you are talking about a specific point of time, you use at. Similarly, whenever you are referring to any buildings in your city as locations, there also you use at as the preposition. Okay. Let me explain it to you with the help of these examples. I'll meet you at the railway station. Where will you meet me? I'll meet you at the railway station. This is the location where I'll meet you. Rahul works at a private bank on crossroad. Where does Rahul work? Rahul works at a private uh, bank. 
what's the location of his work he works at a private bank on cross road we usually meet for drinks at the club where do you meet for drinks we meet at the club because this is the location where we meet so whenever you are using any buildings in your city as locations you use at as the preposition okay uh, with phrases like at home at work at play also you use at okay i prefer to spend my weekends at home watching the new web series right where do you spend your weekends i spend them at home i was at work where were you i was at work when the earthquake struck okay but there are some exceptions also here see this sentence i drove home to meet my aunt we have the word home here but i'm not using at before it why because i'm seeing some motion before it what is the motion i'm driving i'm driving and i'm reaching home to meet my aunt i drove home so i'm not using at here so whenever there is a sense of motion what is happening here there is a sense of motion here so whenever there is a sense of motion you do not use at right you simply write i drove home to meet my aunt i'm reaching home in 5 minutes said father i'm reaching home right before this home also i don't have at why because i'm reaching home there's a sense of motion again okay now this is again something very interesting pay attention so whenever we are referring to small towns and villages we use the preposition at with big cities and metros we use in in with big cities and metros we use in right so this is something really interesting and it should make you also happy to see this i stay at rawat bhata now rawat bhata this is a small town in rajasthan so i stay at rawat bhata but if it was mumbai i would say i stay in mumbai because mumbai is what mumbai is a metro my parents used to work at bharatpur in rajasthan now rajasthan is a big state so i'm using in before it but bharatpur is a small place in rajasthan so my parent used to work at bharatpur but if they were working in mumbai what would i say i would say my parents used to work in mumbai so with big cities and metros you use in but with small towns and villages you use at okay but there are some exceptions here also see this one we stayed at mumbai for a night before leaving for bangalore now what's happening here mumbai it's a big city it's a metro i'm still using at while i told you that you should be using in here but i'm using at here because we stayed at mumbai for a night we were briefly there in mumbai before we left for bangalore so whenever you are staying uh, in a metro or a big city briefly before you move on you use at okay so we stayed at mumbai for a night before leaving for bangalore pay attention to this one i stay in mumbai and work here is the next example so i stay here in mumbai i'm not moving anywhere i'm not here briefly i'm here for a long time i'm staying here so i stay in mumbai and i work here so that is why in here okay so you see how being aware of these small things can help us tremendously in improving our scores and verbal ability but the problem is we don't pay attention to these small things we keep running after bigger things but it is very very important that you pay attention to these small logics which many a times work just like mathematics although it is language but there are a lot of things which are similar to mathematics here also there will be exceptions no doubt about it but if you are aware of these small things most of the times you will be able to solve your paper well okay so now let's move on to our next word and our next word is in so we use this preposition in before years and months for example i would say in 2005 2005 is here what is 2005 here it's a year in january i would say so january is what it is again the name of a month here so i would say in 2005 and in january for example i came to pune in july 
Now I'm directly writing the month here, the name of a month, which is July. So in before it. But read this sentence. I came to Pune on 5th December 2021. I'm not directly writing the month. I'm first writing a date here, which is 5th December. That is why on here. I came to I came to Pune on 5th December 2021. Similarly, let's meet on Saturday. I'm talking about a day here. It's neither a year nor a month. Okay, that's why I'm using on. Let's meet on Saturday. It's a holiday for me. And as we discussed in the previous slide, before the words like morning, evening, afternoon, we use the preposition in. And before the names of the seasons also, we use in. For example, let's sleep. We'll discuss this in the morning. I didn't say at the morning. I said in the morning. We'll discuss this in the morning. Hot beverages sell fast in winters, right? Because winter is what? It's a season that we are talking about. So before the names of the seasons also, we write the preposition in. Now, see this one. When you mean inside something, you use the preposition again in. Okay, let me try to explain it to you. So whenever you have got a space and you have an object inside it, right and this object is stationary now the object is not moving this uh, uh, space this outside box it might be moving but the object inside is stationary in the space it means you will use the preposition in here that is a more suitable thing to do okay for example if you intend to work in mumbai get used to traveling in crowded buses and trains so where am i i am inside the bus or the train while the train might be moving i am inside the train okay i'm moving along with the train but inside the train i'm stationary okay so if you intend to work in mumbai get used to traveling in crowded buses and trains similarly see the second example i've kept a new plant in the garden today where have i kept it i have a garden and i have added a new plant to it i have added a new plant here so i have kept a new plant in the garden today i met him in the theater this morning where did i meet him i met him in the theater right similarly you see after a period of time there also you use the preposition in let's see an example here be there i'll meet you in 5 minutes in 5 minutes you see Maybe whenever when my friend called me, I was getting ready and I told him that, OK, right now I'm getting ready and I'll meet you in five minutes. As five minutes get over, I'll meet you. Give me some time to get ready and come there. OK, similarly, she'll return in a week. In a week means at the expiry of this time. OK, so seventh she left. She will take seven days. She will take a week. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. She'll take this week and then she will return at the expiry of this time. But if I meant to say that she will return before the expiry of this time, before the expiry of this time, then what would I write? I would write, she promised to finish the work within a week, right? Before the expiry of this time. She promised to give me the dress within a week right before the expiry of the week before the week gets over that is what it means i hope the things are becoming clear to you don't worry uh, right now we are learning these things but we'll see a lot of exercises also in the coming videos so right now just learn the concepts with me and try to see these examples and just prepare your mind that okay fine this is this preposition works like this when we see the exercises things will become better for you Okay, now the next preposition that is really important is into. And it is important because a lot of students confuse in and into a lot. They don't know where to use in and where to use into. So let's try to understand that. Into we use whenever we are trying to express movement towards or in the direction of something. The medium here changes. Let me try to explain it to you. So you see, uh, whenever you are, you mean movement in the direction of something or towards something you use into 
okay and what happens here is the medium changes okay from one place the thing comes to another place right this is what happens in case of into the examples will make the things more clear the first one after a long wait i stepped into the doctor's cabin so maybe i was waiting in the hall outside and this is the doctor's cabin i moved into the doctor's cabin there is a sense of movement here you see it is moving i am moving towards or in the direction of something right similarly on my way back i ran into a dust storm there was a dust storm here i was coming maybe by my car and i ran into it there is a sense of movement here i was moving okay there is a sense of movement I, and i ran into a dust storm similarly you see this one the third one pour the juice into the glass why into the glass because there is a sense of movement and the medium is also getting changed here earlier the juice was maybe say in the jug now i am pouring it in a glass right so what is happening the juice is moving from the jug into the glass and the medium is also changing so into the glass that is the correct usage okay now what also happens is if you change something into something else if the physical state if the physical look of something changes then also you use the preposition into okay how let's see this example translating the paragraph from english into french was difficult what is happening earlier it was written in english now it is changing into something else it is transforming getting transformed okay so english into french divide the dough into five equal parts earlier i had the complete dough like this but now i have divided it into five equal parts the way it looks now is different it has transformed in its looks okay that is why into five equal parts i changed into a comfortable night dress after the party in this case also you use into you are changing into a dress okay i changed into a tuxedo for the party i changed into a comfortable night dress after the party okay so this is also where you use into okay now the next one is again very interesting pay attention whenever you want to convey high level of interest or enthusiasm then you use into how see this example she is really into music what does this mean this means that she really loves music she is really interested in music and that is why she is really into music okay now see the second sentence many of us have experienced this in life he talks about sara all day he is really into her it simply means that whenever you have your first boyfriend or your first girlfriend and you are really enthusiastic about them you say you uh, talk about them the whole day and you are really into them he really talks about sara all day he is really into her it means he is really interested in her he is really enthusiastic about her interesting isn't it now let us pay attention to this one because this is where the questions usually come from this is an application of into an unnecessary application of into i would say where we use the uh, word into unnecessarily along with investigate and it is a very common phrasal verb mistake that many of us commit and examiners definitely try to test this so what i'm trying to tell you here is that with the word investigate you do not use into no not at all okay the crime branch is investigating the matter many of you might feel investigating into the matter absolutely not it is the crime branch is investigating the matter similar to this there's another mistake that there's a, another common phrasal verb mistake that we commit let's see that one also similarly there's another very common mistake that we commit in the usage of this word into and it is with enter so whenever you are talking about enter and you are saying that you are using it to enter any physical spaces like buildings or locations you simply say enter we entered the office not entered into the office simply we entered the office and met the coordinator right pay attention here but if you are using enter 
for the purpose of entering into the contracts agreements or any discussions or starting to join or something then you use enter into i have decided to enter into an agreement why because i'm talking about an agreement here that is why i have decided to enter into an agreement with him i entered into a discussion with the chef but it if it was a physical space if it was a building or a location i would simply say enter right this is again very very interesting and very very important pay attention to it mark it as star as i have marked on the top and prepare it for your exams also okay let's see the next one okay now let's talk about the word to the preposition to so whenever you are trying to show movement you use the preposition to for example we walked to the cafe for breakfast we are flying to jaipur which means we are walking towards the cafe we are walking to the cafe we are flying to jaipur for a wedding tomorrow morning every evening i go i go to the library right so there's a movement involved here okay that is why the preposition to but see this one we arrived at the airport on time we arrived at the airport with the word arrive you do not use to you use at we arrived at the airport on time okay now see this one whenever we want to show start and end time are specified we use the word to the cafe is open from 7 am to 9 pm right it opens at 7 am and it is open till 9 pm so it is open from this time to this time right that is why the word to here i hope the things are becoming better for you they are becoming clear to you and they'll help you in the exams also okay so now let's move on to the next set of words that we have got here and they are on and upon the first word that we are going to talk about is on okay now just a while back we saw that whenever we are talking about days and dates we use the preposition on with them but if it is month or year that we are talking about we use in right so we have already seen this quite in detail so i'll not talk much about them but just to reinforce the things let's see these two examples the example number 1 given to you here is i'll be there for the meeting on thursday because thursday is a day right similarly let's interview the new candidate on 5th september because there is a specific date given to you if i would have meant let's interview the candidate sometime in september we would say let's interview the new candidate in september right but since the date is given to you it is on 5th september now the next use of this preposition on is really important because it is here used to denote the position of something okay and the thing is at rest don't worry let me try to explain it to you okay so let us say this is a table that we have got here okay and there is a dish lying on the table at the moment the dish is at rest it is not moving okay so with respect to the table the dish is on the table right it is not moving pay attention to this the motion is important here okay there is no motion in the dish uh, this dish so i'm saying the dish lay on the table i notice some dirt on the shirt so suppose let us say this is the fabric of the shirt and there is some dirt that i notice here the dirt is not moving it has not come like this right it is it has not come like this it is already there and i notice it so i notice some dirt on the shirt is what we would say now this example is really important say uh, whenever we talk about uh, uh, commuting to some place and we want to say that okay we are coming by train we are coming by auto we are coming by bus we say by train by auto by scooter right that is how we talk but whenever you want to communicate that you are traveling uh, you you are walking down to some place right then you would say on foot this is the right use of preposition on here okay you will not say by foot she went to the temple on foot is what you would say you would not say she went to the temple by foot right so pay attention to this one because 
this is uh, uh, a place where we commonly commit a mistake okay so this is really really important market and pay attention to this okay now that we have talked about on the next word that we are going to discuss is upon and this is one of the most commonly confused prepositions okay now uh, let me try to clarify the things for you and i hope they will become better their concepts will become better and you will be able to use it correctly so now we saw that whenever the things are at rest right whenever i had a table and the dish uh, was there on the table so and there was no movement we said the dish is on the table but whenever there is a motion involved right we use upon how let's see suppose this is a let's see this example first the cat sprang upon the bed why because let us say that this is a bed that we have here okay and there is a cat here okay and this cat it jumps onto the bed right there is a motion involved here now so we say the cat sprang upon the bed the cat is all not there on the bed already it is it sprang up on the bed because there is motion involved here right similarly in the example of that shirt we would have said some dust flew and settled up on the shirt right that would have that is what would have happened in that case had there been motion in this dust right now upon is also used before an event or a time when it is almost near to you okay so uh, let's see this example diwali is almost upon us the uh, it means that diwali is very near to us it is almost there right it's almost on our head right diwali is almost upon us the wedding date is almost upon us so it is very near to you that is what it means right similarly whenever something happens immediately after something we use upon how see this example rohan joined a course in solar power immediately upon finishing his intermediate which means that rohan finished his intermediate and immediately he joined solar power right there was no gap between the two things he did not waste any time he immediately did it rohan joined a course in solar power immediately upon finishing his intermediate what you would say so whenever you uh, finish something and something next immediately happens you say immediately upon uh, right so this is another important use of upon pay attention and try to use it in your day to day language also and try to solve the questions based on this if they happen to appear in your verbal ability paper okay and don't worry at all we'll do a lot of practice exercises also the reason i have not included practice questions here is otherwise the video will become too long but i'll separately get you the exercises and the concepts will become even stronger then okay so don't worry at the moment just follow me just keep listening to what i'm saying just pay attention and invest in building your concepts at the moment because these are the concepts that you are going to apply actually right okay so now let us move on to three very commonly confused words which are also used as prepositions okay and these words are for from and since many of us are confused about them let's try to fix your concepts here okay so the first word that we are going to deal with is for okay so this word for we use it to denote a period of time see underline this word period of time okay i have been waiting here for 2 hours i have used the preposition for because there is a period of time here 2 hours 3 hours 4 hours 15 days 5 years this is what this is period of time right so i have used i have been waiting here for 2 hours I have lived in Amsterdam for four years, right? Because four years is a period of time. I'm not talking about the specific years from this time to this time. No, I'm just randomly, generally saying that I have lived in Amsterdam for four years. Okay? Had it had there been some uh, specified time given to you, the usage would have been different. Okay? So 
whenever we are talking about period of time it is for okay now see this from specific point of time is provided to you and the user usually is something like this the shop is open from 7 am to 9 pm every day okay specific point of time is given to you 7 am closure time is also given to you 9 pm so from 7 am to 9 pm right similarly i lived in mumbai from december 2020 to jan 2022 right because there is specific time mentioned here that is why we have used the preposition from here okay now see this one since which you usually confuse with confuse with right denoting some point of time again okay some specific point of time again we are talking about i've lived in mumbai since 2005 right so specific year is given to you here i've lived in mumbai since when since 2005 i'm not saying randomly now 4 years 2 years 5 years right i'm saying since 2005 there is a specific point of time that i'm talking about so i've lived in mumbai since 2005 Now see the second example. I have been painting this picture since last evening because there's a specific point of reference provided to me. Reference of time is provided to me since when? Since last evening. Okay. So this is how these three words work. Make sure that you pause the video here if you are confused still, and take a good look at this because this is really really important. Many a times in the exams you will find the questions also from this concept. Okay. so let us ensure that they are fixed for you okay so now moving on to the next set of two words and the set is till and by we use this preposition till when we mean to say up to not before that not earlier than that okay let's see an example things will become more clear to you don't worry the medical store is open till 11 pm okay it will not close before 11 pm it will not close earlier than this okay so don't worry the medical store is open till this time it will not close before this time so this is the point of time given to you right i'm here till 5 pm i'm here till 5 pm i'll not leave before this right this is what it means to say but we use the preposition by when we mean to communicate that i'll not be here later than this i'll not be available after this okay so be quick the doctor leaves by 9 pm the moment 9 pm strikes we will we are sure that doctor will not be there okay so the doctor will not be here after 9 pm 9 pm that is what we mean to say here in this sentence okay and that is how you use the words by and till till you have a deadline here oh sorry till it, this is like i will not leave before this and by means i'll not be available after this right these are this is the main difference between the two words okay so now let us come to the next set of words that we often confuse with and these are the words among and between okay so uh, let us talk about among first this first usage of among says that whenever you want to convey inclusion you use this word among okay let's see this example things will become more clear to you discuss it among yourselves before coming to me said the principal so there is a principal here and he says that this is a group of students okay that wants to go and talk to him and discuss something so he said that before you come to me the principal you discuss it among yourselves right you discuss it among yourselves and after you have reached a conclusion or you have some thought about it then you approach me then you come to me okay so it conveys inclusion i was among the last to board the ship okay so there was a ship there were some people boarding it there was a group of people boarding it and these were the last people to board the ship and i was one among them to board the ship at the end okay so i was among the last people to board the ship i was one among these people to convey convey inclusion i didn't like his attitude towards the poor among other things 
right see this example number 3 i didn't like his attitude towards poor among other things so there were a lot of things about him maybe he was not uh, tidy he did not behave properly with other people he did not uh, you know he did not have ta- table manners or whatever it is there were a lot of things that i did not like about him but among all these things one thing that all i did not like was his behavior towards the poor so inclusion this conveys inclusion that this thing is included in everything else right in his behavior now coming to the next one whenever you want to convey that this thing is in the middle of someone or something then you mean to say among then you want to say among right a deer among the tigers is an easy prey so there is a there are some tigers here and there is one deer here alone okay so a deer among the tigers is an easy prey so where is it it is in the middle of this group of tri- tigers okay so we are using among here see this next example things will become even more clear you feel safe among friends so if you are among your friends so these are your friends and you are among your friends you are with them you feel safe right they are not strangers you are in between them right you are between the people who are known to you you are among them actually right this is the right use of the word among here in this case okay so now let us see this third usage of the preposition among and this is really really important make sure that you have not lost your focus pay attention because this is really important and you are going to find this case many a times okay so we use this word this preposition among when we want to divide something or distribute something and there are more than two people or things to take it okay so i've got something with me and there are more than two people to take it there are more than two people to take it i'll use the word among in that case okay let's see this example let's uh, let's distribute these old clothes and blankets among the poor right you remember in the video on articles we saw that whenever we are talking about the poor whenever we say the poor the rich we are we mean that we are talking about the whole class of poor people right we are talking about the whole class of poor people we are not talking about just one poor person or two poor people right we are talking about the whole class it means there are two there are many people in that group right so among i want to distribute old some old clothes and blankets but there are many people to take it more than two people to take it so i use the word among here okay now see this example distribute the sweets between sita and geeta now there are only two takers i have got some sweets but there are only two takers sita and geeta so between sita and geeta right now see this next example here uh, this is an exception type of a thing so you must pay attention to it the trade agreement was signed between india nepal and bangladesh there are three countries involved here there are three countries i'm still using the word between i'm not using among why because here we are talking about individual relationships right pay attention to this one otherwise you'll get it wrong in the exams we are talking about although there are three countries involved more than two uh, are here still we are using between because individual relationships are involved here so the trade agreement was signed between india nepal and bangladesh right similarly a trade agreement already exists among asian countries so this is a group now i'm not using between why because this is a group of asian countries that i'm talking about right i'm not talking about individual countries at the moment i'm talking about a group or a mass noun right so here i'm using among if you are confused anywhere if you are finding it difficult at all i would highly recommend that you pause this video here itself and take a good look at this slide because this is really really important for you and make sure that your concepts about the usage of this word among in this sense are absolutely clear 
otherwise there is a high chance that you'll commit a mistake okay now coming to the usage of the word between so between is used when you want to show connection or separation of two or more places people or things okay now let's try to understand this with the help of this example the new train between havra and mumbai reduces the travel time by 3 hours so what is this new train doing it is connecting havra and mumbai so what are we trying to do we are trying to show the connection right train between havra and mumbai reduces the travel time by 3 hours right similarly this example number 2 the new research tries to show a link between testosterone levels and hospitalization due to covid in males okay so what is this new research trying to do it is trying to show a link a connection between that is why we have used the word between what is it trying to link it is trying to link the testosterone levels and hospitalization due to covid in males right and this is the connection that it is trying to show so that is why we have used the word between here okay now we know that it is also used to show the separation as we have seen in the rule okay so this example number 3 it shows you what's the difference between these two models we are trying to separate these two models from each other we are trying to find the difference between the two so what's the difference between the two models okay so whenever you are trying to show the connection or the separation between two things you use the word between okay so now moving on to the next set of words by and with but before i begin there is something that i want to ask you now that you have already seen so many words you must have realized one thing all of this is very very easy there is nothing difficult actually as such the only thing is our concepts and our logics are not clear which makes the thing difficult for us right so if you have your logic uh, logic set and if your concepts are clear then these things the implementation is not all that difficult so i always advise the students to be clear in their concepts right so all of this is very very easy is the only thing i want to tell you english is not difficult this language is not difficult it is easy provided your concepts are clear and for that you have to spend some time on it okay now let us begin with the word by so this word by it is used when we want to show a place transport communication mode method of payment time a reflexive pronoun or that this is an agent okay don't worry at the moment we have just listed everything here okay but i'll make everything clear for you with the help of these examples see this one first my restaurant is by the sea okay so we talked about the first thing place so this is what it is my restaurant is by the sea which means that probably the sea beach is just here and my restaurant is here okay so my restaurant is by the sea i'm traveling by train after a long time okay now we said with transports and communication mode we use by okay so i'm traveling by train after a long time by train by scooter by bus by auto this is how we talk right but if we are walking down to some place we say on foot this is an exception right we do not say by foot no i'm coming by foot no we say i'm coming on foot okay i'm traveling by train and i'm walking down means i'm coming on foot i'll be home by 5 pm we said it is used with time also this is how it is used so this tells me that this is the deadline 5 pm is my deadline i'll come before this but i'll not get late right not later than this i'll come before this but this but not later than this so this is the deadline i love playing by myself which means that this is a myself is what it is a reflexive pronoun myself yourself right so whenever you have this kind of words you use by so i love playing by myself similarly if you are trying to make your payment uh, using a credit card you would say i'll make the payment by credit card right so that is method of payment i hope things are clear in your mind now 
and the last one we had here was as an agent when we are trying to see something as an agent when we see something as an agent then we use by how see this one see this example the tiger the tiger was killed by the hunter means who who killed the tiger the hunter killed the tiger so hunter was the agent here right who killed the tiger the hunter killed the tiger by how did he kill the tiger with the bullet right so with here answers how how did he kill the tiger he killed the tiger with a bullet so this was the mode medium whatever you may call it to be so he used the bullet to kill the tiger okay i hope the difference is clear to you if you have any doubts in your mind as i always say as i always encourage you you can pause the video and try to take a good look at this slide now the next set of words that we have got us above over under below one of the most confused word sets right but it can be very very easy if we just have our concepts right there is nothing difficult as such the only reason we find them to be difficult is because our concepts are not clear okay now see above the opposite is below so you can understand them with this one concept over the opposite is under one concept applies for them to okay now see we use above or below in the sense of height to demonstrate the level okay now level is what level is this it is spread right sea level the level of milk in the pot okay or the level of poverty this poverty line okay so this is a line okay it's not a point it's a line it's spread okay so whenever we are talking about things in terms of level we say above or below for example we say 500 meters above the sea level above the sea level or if it is below the sea level that is also you can say if something is below the sea level 500 meters above or below the sea level the level is here something is 500 meters above it or 500 meters below it but this level is there it is spread right like a sea 60% of the population of the city is uh, city this city lives below the poverty level right below the poverty level above or below both both can be there okay depending on the situation so what is poverty level it is a line poverty line right so 60% of the population lives above it or below it whatever the case may be but we are talking about a level we are not talking about a particular point only right it is a line that we are talking about right he'll have to score above average marks to make through so this is again a line most of the students lie here if he wants to make through he'll have to score above it right so i hope the usage of the words above and below is clear to you because we are using them in the sense of level like sea level for spread things okay now coming to over and under now in uh the sense of vertical height whenever we are talking in sense of vertical height if it is a tree or a pole right if it is a light pole like this we take the height of this pole right so whenever we are talking in vertical sense we take over or under we take the height of this object and whenever we are taking the height we say over or under similarly if there is a touch or motion involved then also we use one of these words depending upon the situation don't worry i'll make them clear for you see this first example the fan is the fan is over my head it is not above my head it is over my head because i'm standing here and the fan it is probably somewhere here right so it is there is a height this is my height and this is the height of the ceiling where the fan is attached to it right so it is over my head there is a difference here we are talking in vertical sense 
the cat is sitting under my chair so if my chair is here this is the base of my chair and the cat is sitting here there is a height involved here right so the cat is sitting under my chair the cat jumped over the wall why over the wall because there is motion involved here see the rules for over and under that we have written here motion whenever motion is involved and we are talking in terms of height it is over the wall we use the word over right so this is the wall say the cat is in motion and it is jumping the wall so the cat jumped over the wall spread the sand over the ground i am not saying on the ground spread the sand over the ground because i am not i am saying spread okay which means this is the ground and i am spreading the sand particles here like this right so there is touch involved here the sand particles they are actually touching the ground the touch is involved here and you see the rules we have written whenever touch is involved we say over the ground right similarly spread the blanket over the child spread the bed sheet over the bed right because touch is involved here and we are spreading something that is the sense it is given to you now if you are confused anywhere if you are finding it difficult still again as i always say pause the video take a good look at this and i hope if you need to you can even replay this much part of the video things will become pretty clear to you okay and finally coming to the last set of words for today and this set is off and off off with double f with a double f okay this is again a very conf uh, often confused set of words and let's try to fix our understanding about them today so off the one with a single f is used to demonstrate cause reason possession source or content okay how let's see these examples tomorrow is a holiday on account of christmas why is it a holiday tomorrow because it is christmas tomorrow so on account of christmas right reason why it is a holiday on account of christmas okay he died of aids what was the cause of his death he died of aids not from aids no he died of aids is what you write or what you say okay the color of this wall is white shows possession who shows who possesses this color the wall possesses white color okay so off a bottle of electrolyte is all i need right now what do i need what does the bottle have the bottle has electrolyte in it what is the content of the bottle the, the what is contained in the bottle it is an electrolyte that is contained in the bottle right so the content is shown here the content of the bottle so a bottle of electrolyte so you see this is how we use off with a single f okay now coming on to the word of the one with a double f so whenever we want to show separation or detachment we show off okay the restaurant is off the main road okay so the main road is somewhere here and my restaurant is a little away from it it is not on the main road it is not by the main road right we just learned by the sea right so this is off the main road so there is probably a road going inside and my restaurant is a little away from the main road okay so off the main road the discussion was off the topic we were supposed to discuss this but we were not discussing this we kept on discussing this so the discussion was detached from the topic it was away from the topic so there is a sense of separation here the two things were not same right so off the topic the kettle fell off the table this was the table earlier the kettle was on it now the kettle fell down right the kettle fell down and it is detachment right it got separated it got detached from the table so the kettle fell off the table switch off the lights is what we use often put off the fans is something we use often right 
so how, uh, why do we use off here because this is a switch and when we switch off what do we do we disconnect the electricity so switch off the lights right this is the right usage i hope things are becoming clear to you and you are better off now but there is one thing that you need to understand here these are the words these are the general prepositions that we have learned right now but there is something called as omission of prepositions where you should there are some words where you should not be using the preposition uh, at all okay with them you never use the prepositions so omission of prepositions and then there are some phrases which are used as it is with the preposition so we call them phrasal verbs right so these are very important then you also have something called as fixed prepositions because the meanings change as the prepositions change okay so these are the things that are very very again important for your from the exam point of view and i'm going to teach you all of these things in the coming videos so make sure that you stay subscribed that you stay connected to the channel so that you do not miss upon these important concepts okay and we will keep doing the videos on spot the error also spot the error and fill in the blanks sentence improvement type of things also we'll do so make sure that if you want to crack your verbal ability section you are connected to the channel and you do each of these things along with me so guys with this we come to the end of this video and i sincerely hope that whatever we have learned in today's video on prepositions is going to be useful to you in cracking the verbal ability section in your placement test and entrance exams also we'll be releasing more videos on verbal ability to stay updated make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and if you have found today's video useful do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends also i'll come back to you with a new video very soon till then bye bye and take care